Hi class, so today we're going to talk about what are called partial conflict games. Now this is in contrast to the games we've been looking at so far, which are total conflict games. What is a partial conflict game? This is a game where you're not just trying to beat the opponent, you're just trying to do well for yourself. And it's certainly possible that you can both do well for yourself. So in partial conflict games, you're not just trying to make sure your opponent has a low score, you're just worried about your own score. You're just trying to get the highest score you can uh, without regard of how your opponent's doing. So an example of this might be compromising on a place to eat, right? You don't want to just find a place to eat that you like the most, and as long as your friend doesn't like it, that makes you happy. No, you want to make sure you're happy, but also, you know, if your friend likes it or not, is sort of not a big deal, right? It's not total conflict because you aren't gaining sort of virtual happiness points by them losing happiness points. You could definitely find a restaurant that you both enjoy a lot. So we're going to look at a very famous partial conflict game. It's called The Prisoner's Dilemma. And we're going to think about what are some of the strange things that can arise in partial conflict games and in particular, we'll talk about a Nash equilibrium for a game and uh, what that means in, in the context of how to play games and, and what to look for and what to avoid. So the first game that we're going to play is called Split or Steal. And it was popularized as the kind of final round of a game show called uh, Golden Balls. It was a UK game show where contestants would, over the course of the game, try to accumulate as much cash. Uh, there are two contestants. They try to answer questions right and, and do challenges to get money. And at the very end, they had to face this conflict of whether they were going to split their winnings or if one was going to try to steal the winnings from the other. So I have a short video of two people playing this game, and let's just take a look. Okay, so we're going to play a game together, it's called Split or Steal, alright? Uh, it's from a famous game show, okay, called Golden Balls. So the rules are that we've won some amount of money from this game show, okay? So in this case, $6,000, alright? And so the final challenge is that we get to either choose if we want to split this or try to steal it from one another. So if we both select to split the prize, then we'll both get $3,000. But if one of us tries to steal it and the other one tries to split it, then the person who steals it gets all 6000 The other person gets zero, so that's that six zero payoff. But if we both steal it, then we get nothing, both of us, okay? So how are we gonna do this? We have these two cards. Uh, we have a jack and an ace. And if we show the jack, that means we want to steal. If we show the ace, that means we want to split it. Okay, and we'll just we'll play um, ten rounds together, and uh, we'll either you know we'll steal and split and see how it goes. Okay. Okay. All right. First round. I'm just letting you know I'm gonna split it every time with you. Liar. No, I, really. Look, it's really bad if we both steal, so I'm going to split it every time. Yeah, so am I. Okay. My choice. Split. All right, great. Both get 3,000. Nice. All right, let's keep this split train going. You going to split? Mm hmm me too. Oh, you. I didn't believe dirty. you. Dirty. Okay, from I now on, I'm to... gonna split every time. No, it's bull. What? Come on, Leia. Okay. Split. Are you really gonna split though? Yes. Because now I don't trust you. No, of course. It's better for everyone if you just split. No, wait, you're lying. No, for real. <laughs> I can tell that you were lying. <laughs> you're a bad liar. Okay, now that we're even, though. 
Now that we're even, it's fine. I just, I, you betrayed me, so then I had to betray you. No! <laughs> Alright, but seriously, if if we both start stealing, it's really bad, so we should have it. We have 10 more rounds to go, let's just make amends. I don't oh. believe you. I'm going to try one more time, but... Let's just try to let's try and both make some money, okay? And just split. I promise you that I put split there, a hundred percent. I said steal. Why would you do that to me? I hate you. All right, four more rounds. Let's try to get some money. I thought because we were even. Oh, oh, this is great. How many rounds are we doing? Three more. Figure this much. We're just not gonna be friends. I don't know how many more rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Last round. I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, last round. All right. I'm happy that you didn't get any more money. Well, clearly, both of us made very little money on this game show. talk about why we made some of the choices we made i made some choices out of spite hmm i mean to be fair you were the first one to steal from me i was gonna go split because i know you're the a whole cheater. time no i was straight up gonna go split the whole time as long as you kept going split well and once then in we the were very... even we should have no in the very end i was i was gonna go nine splits with you if you kept going splits in the very end i was gonna steal once just so i could make a little bit more money see i knew that just, just why but I would have split the whole time. We would have made so much money. Well, now look what you did. Well, now we're both broke. Okay, but in in reality, like once you start stealing from me, it's like there's no incentive for me to ever go split, right? Because like I'm not gonna make any more money. It's tied. Like both of them, I'm getting zero in. So it's like, well, why even switch? Maybe I could have convinced you to start splitting, both splitting, but it just didn't seem. That's how I felt at the end. I just didn't trust you anymore, and I thought, if I'm going to make no money, I want you to make no money. Oh, I actually switched back to split over here. So. And then you stole from me. You lied. We have video evidence. So don't, don't be playing like it was just me. You literally stole from me first, trying to make me feel bad. Because I knew you were going to do it. No, I didn't until you did it. Okay, so now we're going to change up the rules a little bit. Okay, I think 10 rounds is kind of a long time, too. Yeah, I wasn't expecting 10, or I would have saved that. We'll do five rounds next. Okay. Can do it again? But here's what's going to happen. We're going to change the points a little bit, right? Um, so now we've won $12,000. So if we both split, we get 66. If we both steal, get zero. Well, if one steals and one splits, Ten and two. 
So this is really more of a game of chicken. Um, I don't know if you've watched the movie Grease before. The idea is uh, that you can either, you know, you got some cars, they're racing each other, right? Nice car. Thank you. Right? And then there's this tunnel that they're both trying to go through, right? And uh, it's called chicken because you don't want to be the one to back out. Okay. If you swerve and the other person doesn't swerve and they go into the tunnel, then like they're the cool cats, right? So you don't want to swerve, but if you both don't swerve, then you die. So that's like really bad, right? So they both don't swerve, you get a payout of zero and you die. If one swerves and the other doesn't, then it's still better for the person who didn't swerve. They'll still win, but the other person's at least happy they didn't die, right? So they get two points instead of zero points. And if you both swerve, well, then you both look kind of bad, but you both look equally bad. Okay. Not as bad as if you went sort of and did it. So we're going to do the same thing, except for A is going to be, the ace is going to be to swerve, and the jack is going to be to not swerve. And we can figure out how many cool points we accumulate. Okay, we're gonna do five rounds here. Okay. They don't want to die. All right. Okay. Play five rounds. Although if you're dead, can you really play another round? Ooh, deep. Swerved, you swerved too. Yeah, I was getting a little nervous. It's fine. Didn't swerve. Drag racing is bad. Yeah, but don't worry, you didn't, you're alive at least. Yeah. Let's see if you got the courage. I swerved. Well, you back there at the end too, huh? Well, still alive, which is good. Do you want to live or die? I always want to live. I'm always going to swerve. Well, you can't tell me that. It's not worth it. I'm a champion. It's not worth it, kids. No, I think you are. What? A chicken. Oh god! How <laughs> we both died. Nah. That's probably a fitting end. It really did happen in the last round too, huh? Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, so this game is a little bit different than the other one, right? Um, I don't know, what were your thoughts on how they differed? Um, I felt a little bit better swerving because I never got nothing. Yeah, all right, you still got those two points. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, staying alive when there's such a dr drastic uh, consequence. Yeah, the context made me swerving. think twice. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about this um, in more detail in the lecture notes, but this game 
we were actually sort of at a Nash equilibrium for a while. Um, once you saw that I was not swerving, it didn't benefit you to also not swerve, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you saw I was swerving and you weren't swerving, then if you, if you just decided to swerve yourself, then, well, you just get zero points instead of two. What this is called is a Nash equilibrium point because neither of us were going to change our answer because if only we changed and the other person didn't change, then it just would have been worse for us. I got a little scared you weren't going to swerve. You weren't going to swerve here, though. I thought about it. But then once I saw that you weren't swerving, I was like, okay, well, then I'm... Sorry, that, once I saw you were swerving, I was just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not swerving. I beat you to that tunnel. Mm -hmm. Well, you killed us. You knew I wasn't going to swerve. You deserved it. We... We both deserve to die because of that. <laughs> okay, so you can tell it's definitely an interesting game with a lot of dynamic choices to be made. And in order to analyze a game like this, um, well, we want to be able to make, again, what's called a payoff matrix for this game, except for how is it going to work? both players are sort of getting different payouts. And so when we had those total conflict zero sum games, we could just write the score to player one. But if we think about it this time, player one and player two really have different payouts. Um, so let's try to make a payout matrix for this game. So let's say we have player one here and they can choose to split or steal. We had player two, who again could choose to split or steal. Now let's just write out the payouts, but only to pay player one. So if they both split, then how much money would player one make? They'd make three. If player one chose to split, but player two chose to steal, player one got nothing. If player one chose to steal instead of to split, they would get six. And if player one chose to steal, but player two also chose to steal, they'd both get zero. So this is what the payoff matrix looks like to player one. But let's also draw it for player two. So still player one can decide to split or steal. Player two can decide to split or steal. But now the payoffs are different. If they both split, then pay two, player two gets three. If player one wants to split, but player two steals, then player two gets six. Player two splits while player one steals, then player two gets zero. If they both steal, they get zero. So there's sort of our two payoff matrices depending on who we're looking at, player one or player two's payoffs. And so in order to com and so in order to make this more concise, we're going to combine these into a single payoff matrix. So we'll still have their options here. And instead of just one number inside each box, we'll put both numbers. The first number will be the payoff to player one. And the second number will be the payoff to player two. So in this first case, it's three to both. In this bottom left corner, it was six to player one and zero to player two. Um, in this top right corner, it was zero to player one and six to player two. And finally, down here, this steel steel corner. It was zero for both player one and player two. Okay. So in these payoff matrices, the first entry is going to be the payoff to player one. And the second entry is going to be the payoff to player two. That way we don't need to draw two payoff matrices. Okay, so let's take a look at another 
partial conflict game. It's called the game of chicken. So as you can see, the game of chicken was a little bit different than split or steal, but it had a lot of the same dynamics going on. So let's make a payoff matrix for the game of chicken. Player one could either swerve or not swerve. And player two could either swerve or not swerve. And what were the payoffs if they both swerved? It was just six and six. If both of them chose not to swerve, they would crash and get a payout of zero and zero. And if one swerved and the other didn't, the person who didn't swerve got 10 points, while the person who did swerve got two points. So 10 and two in that corner, but it's gonna be two and 10 in this corner. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a look at these two payoff matrices for these two different games, talk about similarities, but also differences. So let's take a look at the payoff matrix for a split or steal. And let's just think about player one. So we're player one here, and we're gonna either choose to split or steal. And now what are our payoffs if we split and steal? If we split, we're getting payoffs of three and zero. But notice that we're only going to improve our payoffs by switching to steel. Steel is just a strictly better choice than split. Why is that? Well, all the entries in steel are bigger than or equal to the corresponding entries in the split row. And so for player one, they can only gain something and they can't lose anything from, by switching from split to steel. Similarly, for player two, all of their entries in the steal column are bigger than or equal to their entries in the split column. So again, there's no incentive for them not to just steal instead of split. In some cases, it gets them up from three to six. In the other case, it just keeps them at zero. And you sort of saw this come up when we were playing the game. Once one person started to steal, it was very hard for us both to go back to splitting because, well, one, a little bit out of spite, but two, there was just no incentive, right? If we were able to convince them to go back to split, then we would get six, and if we weren't able to, then we would get zero. But if we had gone back to split ourselves, then even if we had convinced them to go back to split, we would only get three. And if they still stole from us, they would get zero. We would still get zero. So the way this plays out, and the term to describe this entry of stealing and stealing, so that's called a Nash equilibrium point. It's named after a famous mathematician, uh, John Nash, a game theorist and economist. And the idea is that no player is incentivized to move off to unilaterally depart from their strategy or choice. What do I mean by unilaterally? I just mean by themselves. So let's see why this highlighted box is a Nash equilibrium point. Say we're player one. The game has just gone steal, steal. Are we incentivized to move from stealing to splitting? Well, that would move us from this outcome of zero, zero to the outcome of zero, six. Notice that that doesn't benefit us at all. Thus, we're not incentivized to switch to split if we just had a round of steal, steal. What about player two? Well, player two, are they incentivized to move from stealing to splitting? 
Well, that would move them over one column. That would move them from zero to zero again. And so similarly, player two is not incentivized to move from steal to split. Now, if they could both agree to move to split, then they could make it all the way up to this box of 3, 3. And that would be great. But that's not a unilateral decision. That's them agreeing and cooperating in order to get a better outcome. And in these games where you can't trust the other person to follow through with their promises, you see why that might be difficult. Now let's take a look at the other game, Chicken. And let's analyze this 0, 0 square one more time. Now, is player 1 incentivized to move off of this square? Let's see. If they switch from not swerve to swerve, then their payout is switching from 0 to 2. Which is great. Similarly, player 2, if they switch from not swerve to swerve, then their payout is also going from 0 to 2 which is also beneficial for them. This is not a Nash equilibrium point. Because both players are incentivized to change their options if this is the case. And this just speaks to the game where you'd rather look like a chicken than crash and die. So where are the Nash equilibrium points for this game then? Well, let's take a look at this square. Is player one incentivized to switch their option here? Well, if they switch from not serve to swerve, then they're going to decrease their points from 10 to 6. And they would not like that. What about player two? They're swerving currently. Are they incentivized to switch to not swerve? Well, if they do, they're decreasing their points from two to zero. So they would also not do that. So this point here is an equilibrium point, a Nash equilibrium point. The same sort of analysis is going to show that this point in the top right is another Nash equilibrium point. Would player one like to move from this square to this square? Well, no, that decreases their score from two to zero. Would player two like to move from this square to this square? Well, no, that decreases their score from 10 to six. And so neither player is incentivized to switch their strategy. Now, be very careful about finding Nash equilibrium points. Each player can only switch between their own choices and not the other player's choices. So you might see this two over there and this six payout over there and say, well, player one would definitely like to switch from two points to six points, right? But player one can't make that choice. Notice that both of them are from player one choosing to swerve. Player two is the one who decides whether or not we're going to be in the first column or the second column. So player one can move vertically through these entries. Player two can move horizontally through these entries, but they can't move the other direction, respectively. So these two highlighted boxes here are actually Nash equilibrium points. If you want to examine this last box, is swerve swerve a Nash equilibrium point? Well, no, it's not, because player one would like to switch from swerve swerve to not swerve swerve, and that would increase their score. And similarly, player two would also like to switch from swerve swerve to swerve not swerve. So that's also not a Nash equilibrium point. And you saw this in the game. After rounds where we both swerved, we were both incentivized to switch to not swerving. So what are we going to do in today's worksheet? We're going to take a look at a few partial conflict games. We're going to get ourselves used to the syntax 
and get used to reading these payoff matrices for partial conflict games. And then we're going to analyze some outcomes to decide whether or not they're Nash equilibrium points. All right, take care.